Hi, today we're looking at dippers. It's the second YouTube film I made on dippers, but it's my second favourite bird, so I do spend quite a bit of time with them. My favourite British bird is the lapwing, and that's really because it was the first bird I ever identified as a child, and I can remember using the Ladybird Book of British Birds in the school library to work it out. I don't know how old I was, but maybe about 10 or something like that. Dippers, the second favourite, I think, it's because of the charisma of the bird, the fact it lives in fast-flowing mountainous streams, very attractive habitat. It dips up and down on its legs, but it also dips under the water. And it is absolutely incredible to watch dippers go under the water. They can, they can stay on the surface in a, a fast-flowing torrent. I mean, the water is quite flooded today. And they can stay on the surface and go under and come back up in exactly the same place. Or, if they choose to, they can bob along like a cork and they float very quickly downstream. Got amazing control in the water. The first few pictures I'm going to show you, I've already showed some in a previous YouTube film. It was where the river was very flooded and the dippers were flying and landing into the same patch in terrible lighting conditions. And I made the point in that film, if I hadn't have got a Sony A1 at the time, I would never have got the camera out of the bag. Photography was impossible. The light was so miserable, so difficult to see the birds, and yet that amazing Sony camera managed to get some pictures sharp. Not very many, because it was so difficult, but it managed some. And I think the Olympus OM1 would also have a, a good attempt at doing it today. But I'll just show you those pictures to start. We'd had a lot of heavy rain, so the river was running very, very strong. These are taken at 20,000 ISO, about four thousandths of a second. But the hard part was even seeing the bird coming, the light was so dull. And I was just astounded that the camera managed to lock onto them. I was looking on the back of the camera, and you can see they are slightly cropped, because that's what you could do with a Sony A1. But they were coming out sharp, and when you ran them through DxO Pure Raw, they were very, very good. So now I'll show you some pictures taken in better lighting conditions. These are either taken with the Sony A1 and the 200 to 600 or with the OM1 and the 150 to 400. I've sold my Sony gear now, but you're still going to be seeing footage and stills pictures taken with it because I was using it for about 15 months, so I've got quite a backlog of, of footage and pictures I can show you. One of the things I'm always looking for when I'm photographing a bird is what's my background and what's my perch. The perch is very important to me. I want the bird to be on an attractive perch. I want it to have a nice background. And then finally I wait for the, the right lighting conditions. Sometimes I want the sun shining, sometimes I want it overcast, and then the direction of the light's important as well. But I get all those things right before I start thinking about photographing a bird. If you've got a bird in an ugly position, then it's an ugly picture. And dippers tend to live in this very attractive habitat. But the particular stream I'm going to be filming on is absolutely gorgeous. And in particular, it has a wonderful waterfall. And dippers are renowned for nesting behind waterfalls, actually behind the current of water coming over the, the top of the waterfall. I've never come across that side, but it's the way dippers are depicted. And you often read that they nest behind waterfalls. So I've not come across that, but I have got some footage of them where they're standing on top of waterfalls and with the current or the torrent of water coming over the waterfall behind them. And it's just a gorgeous setting to be photographing and filming dippers in. So these are taken with the OM1 camera and the 150 to 400 mil zoom. It's very good at picking up birds when they're still very small in the frame. Shutter speed again, around four thousandths of a second. That's what I'd be aiming for, because they are a very fast flyer, dippers. On one occasion, the two birds landed side by side and started to sing, both of them stretching their heads up in the air. Unfortunately, by the time I swung the lens onto them, the one bird had stopped. Now many years ago I worked out that if you photograph dippers at a fifteenth of a second you get most of the pictures of the bird sharp and you get the blurred water. But here the water's moving so fast I was actually using a slightly faster shutter speed, a sixtieth of a second typically. Now 
I normally restrict my slow motion video footage to pictures where the bird is doing something, some action. Not much point in doing slow motion of a bird sitting still on a perch. But this is an exception. The bird isn't moving here, it's the water that's moving. And that makes the slow motion worthwhile doing. 120 frames per second slow motion is approximately five times slow. Of this pair of dippers, one of them had a leg ring on, so I could tell which was which, but I couldn't work out which was the male and which was the female. Now when you get birds where the gender is identical, when you get them side by side, you can usually tell which is the female and which is the male. They just have that look about them. The female tends to have that slightly softer, gentler look, but with dippers, no, I cannot tell the genders apart. but I do really love this effect of the falling water around the bird. Dippers are actually great songbirds and it surprises me how often they sing and the fact that the song carries a long way despite the noisy water you can hear dippers from a distance singing. Watching dippers feed is just amazing, how they can do it. They push themselves completely under the water but can stay still against this strong current coming down and they bob up and down. But the waters must be very rich because they catch a lot of food very quickly. While photographing the dippers, I was also entertained by grey wagtails, two species that share a very similar habitat. And both benefit from perches in flowing water. And this bird is all of a quiver. If we slow it down a little bit. All part of the courtship display. And then the male went into the, the full Monty. Quite spectacular to watch. And just a couple of stills pictures of the wagtail taken with the Sony A1, the 200-600mm lens, but with the 2 times extender fitted, so a 1200mm. 400th of a second, f13. Thanks for watching.